In 2004, Cadillac brought out the LS Packing 400 horsepower having CTSV. It was a big moment for the brand and it saw them putting some seriously potent German rivals right in its crosshairs. It might not have lit a fire under the ass of Audi, BMW, and Mercedes, but it certainly caused them to take notice. 2009 saw a major leap forward for the CTSV when Cadillac brought out the second generation of this super sedan. We jumped from the 6 liter LS2 up to the 6.2 liter supercharged LSA power plant. Forget the gun and knife cliche, this was like bringing an A10 Warthog to a tic tac toe match. Now we come to the present day, and Cadillac has decided to push the CTSV envelope even further. And they have to, really, when you consider there's a Dodge out there that makes 707 horsepower and is fully capable of clipping right past the 200 mile per hour mark. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the third generation CTSV. And it's the craziest one of the bunch. It's fully embraced its four door Corvette ideology. It actually might be more fun than the vet because you can bring along more friends to the smoke show party that you're about to throw. <laughs> Super sedans are a funny thing. They're expensive, they're fast, they're powerful, they're comfortable. They have to straddle the line between luxury and performance. And in recent years, they've just done that wonderfully. This, the third generation CTSV, is the latest entry into that club, and it might be one of the most exciting. It's easily one of the most affordable when you compare it to the German competition. The Mercedes E63 AMG, which makes less power, starts at around $102,000. The BMW M5, which makes less power, starts at around $100,000. Now the Audi RS7 Performance Edition, which makes less power, starts at $129,000. Though it is amazing that there is an Audi 7 Series, you wouldn't call it the 7 Series, but the A7, S7, RS7, it makes 605 horsepower, which is pretty cool. The CTSV makes 640 horsepower from its 6.2 liter supercharged LT4 motor. Fans of the brand and fans of cars in general will know that LT4 denotes this as the same engine that you'd find in the Corvette Z06, which is itself a monster. In that application, the engine is making 650 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque. Here, we're at 640 horse and 630 torque, and that has to do with the way the oil is sloshed around the engine. It's a wet sump system here in the Z06. It's a dry sump. The engine is backed up by the eight-speed automatic paddle shiftable gearbox. In the Z06, it would be a transaxle. Here, it's not, but it does send power to the rear wheels as it should. With that potent powertrain under the standard carbon fiber hood, you can make the dash to 60 in about 3.7 seconds, assuming you can make traction. The top speed of the CTSV is 200 miles per hour, which is also greater than all the rivals. The Benz is limited to 186. I'm sure it can go much faster. The Audi will do 190. I don't know what the M5 will do, but I know it won't do 200. Oddly, the car that you could compare this one most closely to, because it's American, it's brash, it's highly powerful, is the Hellcat, the Charger Hellcat. It's another brash young American that, in that case, makes 707 horsepower and can clip past 200 miles per hour. That's $70,000, so it's not as luxurious as the CTSV and then the German rivals but it is pretty nice inside. Here you're starting at $85,000, and with a few options, like this car has, as tested, you're right around $91,000. If you try to check every box in the book, you can tickle $100,000, but you have to work to get here. We've got the Recaro Performance seats, which get rid of ventilated seats, which, you know, I would like ventilated seats, but these are heated, they're super comfortable, they're way better than the Recaros from the prior generation car, and I like them. You do have to deal with Q though, regardless of how you option this car, and that's kind of a bummer. It's slowly getting better, but it's not there yet. Speaking of getting better, this is the first 
GM application of the 8-speed where I don't hate it. I don't like it in the VET, I don't like it in the ATSV, and here it seems to be far better sorted for the vehicle. It's in the right gear at the right time, it shifts quickly enough, it's, it's much better than I expected. I expected to get into it and be let down once again by the transmission. But that's not the case. Now, besides the engine and transmission, there's a bunch of computer technology doing computer technology things in coordination with the magnetic ride control suspension setup, which is great. There's extra chassis bracing, so this car is 20% stiffer than a standard CTS. The electronically power-assisted steering system has been boosted and tuned to CTS V appropriate levels. Now, the steering is quick and responsive. There's no real feel there, but, I mean, there's a little bit of feel, but not a ton. It's all damped through the system, but it's, it is quick and you can get this car to do exactly what you want it to do. There's no track version of the CTS V that would further push things into the crazy zone because Cadillac says this is the track version right out of the box. And they're right, this thing is a beast of a machine. You can haul down the Hooniverse Highway hooning grounds and just have a blast Haul in your speed with the six piston front, four piston rear Brembo brakes. They're, they're regular brakes, they're not carbon ceramics. They don't offer carbon ceramics because it would just add more cost to this car and it doesn't need them. All you people who think you need the carbon ceramics, you're crazy. Yeah, they are great in certain applications if you're tracking it all the time. But if you're not, you don't need them. You're not going to get the squealing crappiness that those brakes make on the day-to-day -day use. Yes, I know the resale value of a Porsche is hampered if you don't get carbon ceramics, but here in the CTS-V, I'm happy they didn't use them. The engine noise is fantastic. You've got plenty of supercharger whine, which in a car like this and an engine like that, that's what I want to hear. I want to pretend to be Mad Max, even if I'm Mad Max in a business suit. It's all about the business. It's a luxury Z06 with more room for people to join the party. It's far classier than the Hellcat. It's less expensive, more powerful, and has a higher top speed than its German rivals. This is a 200 mile per hour capable Cadillac. It growls when you want it to. It plays calm and cool around town. And if you take it to your favorite racetrack, you're probably gonna set some brand new records. It's the oh so excellent answer to a question not many people are asking, but I don't care about that. I'm just happy that it exists. Our world continues its inevitable march towards electronic computer-driven cars. It's gonna happen, but that day hasn't come just yet. And you'll have to drag me kicking, screaming, and slaying tires into that reality. Stomach of steel. <laughs> I'm not, it's not happening. It's not happening. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. 